I hate when my husband works late. Being at home, alone at night, hearing every little creak, it's uncomfortable. I thought I was just being paranoid. Then my girlfriend said she felt the same way when her husband travels. Until they had what she calls their Vivint talk. Vivint, my friend calls it the best home security system out there. It's super easy to use and fit right into our budget. And I love my video cameras. I can see what's going on in and around my home right from my computer or smartphone. It's actually kind of funny. I told my husband, if you're going to be traveling or working late, I'm getting Vivint. And it's made all the difference. Call now. Not only is installation free, you'll get up to $1,500 worth of Vivint security cameras and equipment today at no charge. Seriously, $1,500. Just pay as little as $99 for activation. Call 877-776-3430-877-776-3430-877-776-3430. Restrictions apply. 48 or 60-month agreement at minimum $49.99 per month required. Not available in Louisiana. See Vivid.com for license numbers. Blog Talk Radio. Om Shabbat Shalom. Holy way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. Hey, this is Josie Ann Nichols George, and you're listening to Activating Compassion Radio, and that was not the song I had planned to start up with. <laughs> so we're going to get that song queued up here in just a minute. Uh, actually, we have a musical guest on today, Angelia Grace, and I'm looking forward to seeing her come into the show. And I'm going to get the song that I had intended to start with, up, and here you go. We'll be back in just a minute.
everyone. Thank you for joining me here today on Activating Compassion Radio. My name is Jessie Ann Nichols-George, and I am your hostess. The music you were listening to at the beginning of the show is Om Namo Bhagavate, and I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> I'm fairly good with pronunciations, but sometimes I mess up just a little bit. Uh, and, and what we have today is a very special guest. Those that have been listening, I want to welcome first of all, to everybody that's listening to the show today, whether you're returning, whether you are joining us for the first time, um, whether you're joining us through one of the affiliate places that we're streaming live, Talk Stream Live, Stream Finder, Penn, also known as Pair Encounters Network, and also those who will be catching this show as a podcast or an archive, um, which may be happening through TuneIn.com, iTunes, or through the YouTube version. And those that have been listening in, you know that this year, this seasonal year, I should say, I am starting a new thing where I'm bringing my musical guest on with the turning points of the year and bringing on guests whose music correlates with that turning of the year and what that year is about. And and you might have remembered I had Jim and Ashley Cash on for the Spring Equinox, beautiful husband-wife team energy that heralded us in. And just we had an amazing time. Today I've got Angela Angelia Grace on for you. And she is a gift, as you just heard from that song at the beginning. That's just a sampler. <laughs> so hold on, because you're in for a whole lot of great vocals and music from her today. And we're going to learn about her work. Um, what we do here at Activating Compassion Radio, by the way, is I look at different ways that compassion exists in our lives how to remove our blocks, resistances, frustrations, and more. And some weeks I'm discussing different aspects of how compassion is in our life, how it affects our life, the different areas of compassion. Some weeks I'm doing more exercises and practical implementations. Most of the time I do have guests on the show, and that gives you a chance to see how other things complement and work with compassion. And then, like today, I highlight different musical artists. I've had Stephen Halpern, Peter Cater on in the past, as well as several others on in the past that you've heard if you've listened to the show before. And I think today's guest really exemplifies compassion through her music. So you're gonna you're gonna love what we have going on today. And her work is just phenomenal. I heard a a sampling of how she did her music and did her work where she did something just very impromptu and I said, that's it, that girl has to be on my show. (laughs) I have to have her. And her music fits perfectly with this Beltane uh, celebration, this May Day celebration that is happening. And this is a very important turning time of the year because it represents fertility. And that is fertility on all levels. That's that's fertility um, in our financial areas. It's fertility with our relationships. It's literal fertility in some senses. Um, It's when the land becomes fertile. And that's when the land starts to produce. It's also the harmonizing of the masculine and the feminine energies in the universe. And I encourage you to get out and celebrate this time if you have a chance to do it. So a little touch in here. In my own work, what I do is I find, I focus on helping people find and use compassion in their everyday lives. And I've created the Genesis Clearing Statement that can be caught in archives where other people have interviewed me. And you can find that uh, on my website as well as other things such as my books, the monthly videos. I posted one just actually this morning. So there's a brand new one up there. And also I've authored four books, the most recent being You, Me, Life Dreams and its companion workbook. And also my first two, Activating Compassion, its companion workbook, as well as I have a fifth one that's coming out that I'm a co-author on called Embraced by the Divine. Uh, It's kind of a women's anthology of getting through the dark night of the soul and challenging times and the tools that we use to get through those times. In addition, I've created the Compassion Tour, which I am currently on, and I'm I'm calling in today and and doing a show today from Cedar Falls, Iowa, from the public library there. Um, They have an amazing little space here, and Iowa is the place I have an event going on all weekend. I've got a full weekend event going on, so it's very exciting to be out here in this region, and I'm headed this upcoming week to a beautiful little store with an incredible staff of people, Liana, who is uh, the owner of Inner Wisdom. Come and join me there. I'm taking private sessions Monday through Thursday 
doing healing work for people there. I also have four workshops that are going on, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights there. Do you want to touch base with me? I'm also going to be going up into the Michigan area in June, and I will be up in Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, that You'll want to catch that. And also, I will be going to Clinton Township, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. So uh, the Purple Plains uh, Enlightenment Center uh, will be that one. So check all of those things out. You can do it on my website, jessianniclesgeorge, the number one.com. And I've got a brand new monthly special that if you participate in any of um, the full weekend or full day events for May or June, I'm including a free set of my Activating Compassion book. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also remember, if you enjoy the show today, share it with people because you're going to want to share this show. I guarantee it. Once you hear more about Angelia and her music, you're going to want to share it. And I find it's going to transform somebody's life. I know it. Her music, I could listen to 24-7, guaranteed. And they can always listen to it in the archives using the same link that you used to come into the show, or they can catch it in iTunes, tunein.com. Those are all available immediately after we finish here today. And then in about one to two weeks, It'll be up on my YouTube channel as well. So whatever option they like to listen to it and to catch it, they can do that. Now, before we get started on things, those that have listened to the show before know I like to tune in to a little piece of work from Yehuda Berg. And this goes up also on my page of the Main Street Universe tab on my website. And you can go back and refer to it during the week. So that's really great. I do that frequently as well. And it's interesting because when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, my gosh, this would be perfect for a guest that I have upcoming (laughs) in in summertime. But you know what? It always plays into whoever I have. So it's going to be interesting to see how you make this connection between this message this week and the guests that I have. And the common name of God that we have this week is water. This is really interesting, water. And his little initial message says, The worst polluted body of water on the planet is not some highly contaminated lake. It is the human body, which consists of over 65% water. And the insight that he provides on this is, according to science, water is the most mysterious and least understood substance in the universe. According to Kabbalah, water is the light of God, made manifest in the physical world. Hence, water pollution is both a physical and spiritual crisis. When the water in our lakes and the water in our cells are tainted with physical and spiritual toxins, our personal and global immune systems are dangerously weakened. Genuinely pure water has the power to cleanse both physically and spiritually in the same way that water miraculously dissolves dirt, grime, and filth in the physical body, dissolves away the spiritual uncleanliness and negativity that we brought upon our body and soul. The Kabbalists say water can naturally heal, water can rejuvenate, and water holds the secret to immortality. But centuries of war, persecution, and hatred took its toll. Thus, water lost this intrinsic power. This name helps to return all water to its original divine and pristine state. And the meditation that he gives on this is, You purify the waters of earth and awaken the forces of healing and immortality. And I find this very interesting. Again, the common name is water. The formal name is Bob Membet. Again, that's Bob Membet. And I do feel that this applies with our guests because her music definitely will affect that cellular level in the body and the water in the body to transform it into a stronger divine connection. And I find, as we've noted, uh, uh, some recent uh, science uh, tests that have been run, we, we've seen the test out there on water and how it carries those codes through snowflakes. And when we play different types of music, how it changes structure of the water. And when we look at that inside ourselves, this is part of why music has such a powerful impact on us, is because it's affecting all of that water in our body, which is most of our body. So when we consider that, 
you can see what a powerful tool music is. So definitely you want to listen in. Now, a little thought here before we go on break and uh, bring back our guest. And I'm just going to make a little thing here. I have to make sure I keep connecting <laughs> here today. I think I'm dead here for a while. But um, before we go on break today, what I've got for you is just this little insight for you to get thinking uh, for our topic today. What is a celestial voice like? What happens to you when you listen to a voice that sounds celestial? And does the voice open a portal to the divine spiritual realm? Now, certainly I've talked about music in the past, but this week I want to take a look at the voice. There is no doubt that different pitches of voice have to impact, just like different tones or singing bowls or different notes have an impact on us. However, there, for me, seems to be something a little extra when it comes through a voice. And for me, when a voice is celestial, it feels like it is a pure channel of divine energy. It is like the singer is really channeling from divine source in consciousness. For me, there is a connection that happens where I can just listen to that voice over and over again. I feel like this has something to do with that person coming from not only a heart-centered space, but also that they are like um, the expression hollow like the bamboo. And they're really allowing themselves to be an open vessel that divine presence seems to flow easily through. For me, it is truly a gift to listen to such a voice. As I look at this on a little deeper level, I realize that this is um, an opening created by the singer, that there is actually a portal that opens and bridges our world through that person. And as the energy flows through them, it triggers our own memories and coding of divine energy and presence. It is like receiving a care package from home. Through, through that person, it seems to flow such an unconditional state of love that reminds us of our celestial home and what it is like to be in divine presence. Now, Angelia Grace is one person that has that very type of voice. And her work in music seems to flow through her as if the divine itself was connecting with us. She approaches her music with focus and peacefulness and simply allows flow to happen. Even creating without any concept of what she is creating or what will come out when she begins. A sort of impromptu style that ends up embracing you in pure love and divine presence. While all music has an impact on us and will affect brain waves, it is particularly those that can allow this flow of celestial quality that seems to touch our heart and emotional states of being. I have found that this type of vocal can instantly transport me, not only into another space, but into direct divine connection. And for me, there is nothing that can lift me out of distortion as this type of sound can do. Have you had an emotional experience from listening to celestial vocals? And have you been able to create this to share with others? What do you feel when you listen to this type of music or sound? Now, this week, our guest focuses on a component of compassion that's related to the aspect in my books of seeing with your heart. And this reminds us that when we each have a light or spark of the divine within us, and it is up to us to fully become that light and shine it brightly in the world, to see what we want to see in the world, be in the world. First, we must become it. I'm going to take a short break, and when we return, I will have with us Angelia Grace sharing her thoughts and music with us. And this song, as well as the opening song, is from her. It's called Equilibrium, and we are going to play this and be back in just a couple of minutes.
Activating Compassion Radio, and my name is Jessie Ann Nichols-George, and I'm your hostess today. You were just listening to a song by today's guest. It's called Equilibrium, and wow, what a sampling. You know, what a way to <laughs> to get the show going, but then with something so powerful as that. And today I have with me Angelia Grace with her cinematic, ah, and tongue-tied today, ethereal and angelic vocals. She writes, composes, produces, and releases her own epic orchestral music. And I think that last sample was a great example of that, don't you think? Those who have heard Angelia Grace sing describe her voice as soothing, healing, and angelic. She reminds the listener of Enya and takes the listener to a different dimension with her epic cinematic ethereal music. She has helped thousands of people across the globe to heal on mental, emotional, and even physical levels. Her mission is to inspire 5% of the world population to live their lives to their fullest potential with her angelic voice and transformational music. And we're looking today at her work and experience in her music, and you can learn more about her work through her website at www angeliamusic.com and that's A-N-G-E-L-I-A-M-U-S-I-C dot com and I'm going to open up her mic here and just simply say Angelia, welcome to Activating Compassion Radio. Oh, hi, thank you so much, Jesse, for inviting to your beautiful show. I so enjoy your show. It's, it's so beautiful. And you're, you're coming in a little bit broken up. I'm going to let you know that. But we're going to do this. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, there you go. You're we're... a little bit clearer. Okay. So I'm just going to get a little bit closer to the computer. Okay. Coming in a little broken again, but it's okay. We're going to work with this. And, you know, I would love for you to start off today by sharing a little bit of your story. How did you get into singing and bringing and, and this type of music in particular? It started in 2012. 2012 was the first step and I've been very. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you here for a minute because it's it's really really broken. Um, okay. And we're, um, should I try to call back? Uh, if if you would like to try to call back, that would be great. <laughs> okay. See if you can get a little stronger connection if you call back. Okay. We're going to give her a moment to, to, to come back into our switchboard here. And I want to mention that Angelia is calling us from Ireland today. She, you know, and... Talk about the May Day, right? <laughs> Talk about how the May Day correlates with Ireland. Ireland was a big place for May Day celebrations. And so um, it's really exciting to have her calling in from specifically Ireland on on May Day as well. And it's going to be fun to hear her story because I heard something about the age of 12 in there. I don't know if everybody else heard that. <laughs> but I heard that. And before the show, I was having a, a, a messaging conversation with Angelia, and she is um, uh, really, um, she was mentioning how she was inspired by her mother. And I thought, isn't that really appropriate that we're coming up on Mother's Day and her mother had such a great influence on her and her work? And, you know, that last piece that we had there at the break is, is such a beautiful example. I mean, to me, that is just like, talk about cinematic orchestra level <laughs> music as we were mentioning um, I mean to me I look at that and it's like oh my gosh that's like an epic showpiece and that's something I would expect to hear so here she is back in again let's see if we have a clear con- connection here I, 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 it's a little bit better it's still kind of broken up um, in there so Let's see if we can work with it. All right. So um, in 2012, and during that song, I Love You, I was just 
repeat as a mantra in a very, very melodic way, but it didn't do any music to the song. And I was just sitting, repeating it over and over and over again. And when and I was we're chopping, a, we're chopping a whole lot again, so I'm sorry to interrupt. And I heard something about a song, I Love You, um, yes. that you created when you first started. Yes, so I read the song, I Love You. It was a very simple song where it's just singing the, the words, I love you over and over and over again. And, I, and I'm going to oh, cut in a little bit because I know I'm catching part of what you're saying, but I know it's also cutting, uh, coming in choppy. So uh, okay. I'm, I'm doing this just so we can kind of get some things in for our listeners here. And and what you were mentioning was that you were using the I love you as just a very repetitory um, aspect in there and just coming and feeling this love for others, for yourself, um, for the world in there and just letting that emanate out from the heart space and creating creating that repetition, which is a very powerful repetition, obviously, because it when we say I love you, we're not just saying I love you to others, we're saying I love you to ourselves, to the divine, to the whole component. Yes, and the I love you song was I created specifically for my mom uh, because I was so appreciative and I really want to share with her how grateful I was for everything that she has given to me and everything that she has done for me. So playing this song, and the first thought that came to your mind, Angelia, you have to start sharing your voice with the world. And I was, I was a little bit shocked by that because I was, I was a little surprised. Who would be interested in listening to me? And uh, I didn't really, I didn't really believe her. And so at some point, um, there, we had this workshop that we were doing together. Simple song, and all these people were standing. 
standing in line. I think there were about 20 of them all waiting for the CD to be burned for them. And that was most important uh, when I decided, okay, this is something that matters to people. So it's a time to stop being selfish and and just let go play of my um, uh, low self team and just start sharing my talent and my gift to the world. So I'm going to cut in a little bit here. Um, so you, you start cutting these CDs um, by your computer. <laughs> yeah. um, and you, I know how that goes because I, I'm a person that's like, okay, I, I've got to be as resourceful as, as possible in what I'm doing. And uh, and, and you're finding that, uh, you know, for you, for people to spend their, what you said, hard-earned money on your work, um, you know, yes, that can be very flattering, but it, it opened a whole space of compassion and gratitude for you. And I think that this is this is something that's a real turning point for somebody that probably opened a lot of doors for you as well because uh, in that process, I know how we handle those compliments coming in make a huge difference how everything flows from there. You know, if we handle it and go, oh, you know, thank you, and it's good to say thank you, um, but we get wrapped up in the ego part of it, then uh, what happens is, is oftentimes we, um, you know, we kind of get straight into all these different distortions, but when we can do what you did, which is open up to the space of gratitude and go, oh, my goodness, this is uh, an amazing blessing, and, and I'm so grateful that people are being touched in such a deep way to to want to spend their money on me. And um, that's a real a real turning point, I would say. Yes, absolutely. And from there, I started recording YouTube videos. And I was very loyal at doing it. So every week, I would stand in front of the camera and just start to sing. And just, it would just be a flow of inspiration. You would just hear my voice, a cappella, and I would just record it and put it on YouTube every week. So I did that for a whole year. Uh, very little came out of it, but at some point I saw that people started commenting on my video, and they started sharing their appreciation for for the work that I was doing. And that again was an encouragement to, to and, and a motivation to keep on doing it until at some point um, the you know the singing went from being a hobby and something just to be sharing with the world into more professional area of, of as singing as a career. So um, I met some really incredible people in the music business, in the music industry, um, but also a lot of spiritual and a lot of conscious people who were so very supportive of the work that I was doing because everybody, every single person just telling me, Angelia, your music is so soothing. Your music is so healing. It really helps me to to lift my mind from all these worries that I had. So that was that was really a big thing for me when when that happened. Well, I'll I'll reaffirm that <laughs> because <laughs> I remember the clip that I saw coming in through the Spiritual Nourishment Network, uh, which is my group online on Facebook, and. You shared those, and it was just you being impromptu and sharing uh, this way of creating and what you were doing. I was like, oh, my gosh, if this girl can just sit down and impromptu this, I mean, that is that just amazes me. And, and I was touched from that very moment. And I noticed when I was preparing for the show uh, with you t- for today, and I was going through and I was listening to your music, which I do with all my musical guests, and it's like, okay, let's get this at the beginning, this at the end, let's put these in between. And I was sitting there listening, and I I literally tranced out to the point that I thought I was still listening to the music after the music stopped. <laughs> oh, wow. And I, was, 
I was in such a, a peaceful place. It was amazing. And I was sitting there, and I, I this last week or so has been a real, I know it's a big turning point for me, but it's, it's really testing my faith. So to sit and to be able to listen to that music, and it just helped to really maintain this, this space of incredible peacefulness um, that unless you just sit and listen to your music, it's almost really hard to describe because yes. it was so deep and so connected that I was like, I have nothing to worry about. And I, I, I can really, really relate to what you're saying. And, I mean, the, it's funny how, how sometimes when you have, um, uh, how to say this, when you have a, a struggle or something that you do, that, that is a big roadblock to you and you kind of need help with it, you know. Sometimes what I would do is I would create the solution for myself. So I would say, like, what do I need to do to solve this problem? So at some point, I had terrible issues sleeping. Like, my mind was so busy all the time, I couldn't calm myself down, and I, I was really bad at meditating. It just wouldn't work for me. And then at some point, I sat by myself, once I'm going to create a CD, which I will call um, a delicate sleep therapy CD. So what I did is I, would, I woke up in the middle of the night, I think it was, and I just started recording my voice. And it was so soothing and very calming. I could literally feel the brain waves dropping to alpha state level or even deeper. And with that song, I literally sang for one full hour without interruption. So when you would listen to the CD, it literally has just one track, and you just it has no beginning and no ending. But you can just put on repeat endlessly and have like a like a room cleanser, or uh, for the purpose I created, you just put it on repeat and you go to sleep with it. And I've done that as well uh, with things along the way, and I could easily see that um, happening with your music in there. And and a lot of your music is actually based around um, prayers or chants, if you want to say that, um, Mm -hmm. mantras, things like that. And and we're going to play a mantra when we close out the show today. Um, But I think that that's an important thing because... You have not only the the brainwave from the musical, the instrumental side that is shifting, but there's there's almost like an activation right in that heart center. There's a there is a deep healing that goes on. It really um, it's a prayer, and and as we know, prayers is said in you know a wonderful format. Um, really make a difference in in what we bring in. And it's those prayers, it's that conscious connection and sometimes subconscious connection when we do it in a, I play things in a state of sleep to let it filter in, um, that that just is really a powerful place when it drops us into those more trance-like states. Absolutely. And it's, it's really all about letting them and with the music that is called them singing prayers. At some point, I was um, I was doing the singing prayers on my YouTube channel, and I was focusing on every different topic that was really important to a lot of people. So one of the singing prayers that were really, really, uh, I think it has like a few thousand views or so by now, but it was such a deep, soothing song. And it's called for peace. And just a little bit of music and inspiration. And, and I think that's it, is when you can trigger inspiration, the power of inspiration is, I, I, it, it's, a, it's a unique energy all in, of itself because it's the inspiration that comes to us from divine source. It's the inspiration that opens doors for us 
in whole new ways, whole new realms, whole new. I mean, that's that's what gives us that oomph to keep going when the challenges hit. It's the inspiration that reminds us that that energy, that divine energy, is present with us. That that we have that source energy on our side, supporting us, loving us, caring for us, keeping us safe in these processes. And this is part of why I think your music is so powerful during these particular times where people are facing hard times and they're facing challenges and they're facing struggles along the way. Um, You know, I'm going to play another one of your songs and maybe you can give us a little insight into this song um, before we play it here Mm -hmm. and, and just share with us maybe what's behind it. And this is the song Solitude. Okay, yes. So Solitude was one of the first songs where I wrote a lyric. So a lot of the times I would just sing without words or something. But this one is the first song where I actually experimented on putting words down to the notes. And the song Solitude is really about going deep inside of you where people might actually be frightened and afraid of going in. Can you so, still hear me? Yeah, you're cutting in and out a little bit. So this is one that is one of your very first pieces. And yes. you were just kind of going with it, seeing where it was going to go. And it was interesting. You, you said that this is like going to a very deep place inside of you. And, and I made some of my own personal notes. So like with Equilibrium that we played at the, the break, I made a note that's almost like an epic movie. <laughs> and yes. and then with Solitude, the notes that I have made on this, it, I, I made specifically the note like a private prayer when you think no one else is listening. And um, so that ties right in with what you were um, doing and and I'm hoping to get this up in just a minute. I'm having a little bit of a connection problem on my end <laughs> here with this, and it's just reconnecting the network really quick here. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, but I'm going to keep talking in the meantime. <laughs> there we go. We're right back up again. There we go. And um, and we're, this will be solitude, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes after hearing this piece.
Welcome back. And in case you're just tuning in, you are listening to Activating Compassion Radio. My name is Jessie. I'm Nichols George. And our guest today did that last piece we were just listening to, Solitude, and her name is Angelia Grace. She's calling in from Ireland today. So um, we have a little bit of choppy connection in here, but we're we're working with that. <laughs> And we're getting the key points out all the same. And we're enjoying this incredible, beautiful music that she's produced, that she's done. Solitude was one of her earlier pieces, one of the very first pieces that she did. And she was sharing with us, and you'll have to go back and listen to the archives, she was sharing with us how her mother was such a support and inspiration to her. And uh, I have an interesting question for Angelia here. Um why inspire only 5% of the population to live their lives to the fullest? Why not go for something more? <laughs> um, very good question. Actually, the, at first I decided, you know, I, I want uh, a very specific number, but at least I have something to focus on and um, and go for that. And when I reach that goal, I can go for something bigger. But then at some point, um, I, I realized that it's, it's time to let go of the, the limiting belief that you know, there's only 5% of people that are I there. think we're losing a, a chunk of this here. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit no, random, I, 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 it sounds like, in the number, but there's also maybe a little bit of a spiritual purpose behind it. Yes, it's not really up to the um in the years when I really started this music, um I was I was starting to came from a very small perspective for myself. So I was I was not very confident about what I knew that I wanted to do. And so the moment I come to let go of that so the the five percent actually, if I if I caught things <laughs> well enough, um, was about in a sense inspiring five percent of yourself to the oh, work. Okay. And, and I'm sorry, what was that? I I didn't look at that point. And so the inspiring even a small percentage within ourselves allows us to, to grow and unfold and that that's kind of a trigger point that if we can even inspire that much within ourselves and in the thought then that if we inspired even 5% of the, the people on the face of the earth, that that would be a large number of people in the spectrum of things. Um, and we realize this just by the power that um, you know, if we look at different things through different cultures, of, uh, you know, so a lot of cultures go with a 10% tithing type of thing. But, it, you know, even if it just shows the power that, that, that the divine energy needs a very small percentage to have um, a gigantic influence. It doesn't require 90%. <laughs> it requires a very small small percentage to have this big global effect and of course five percent of the people as we know by the time that cascades down the ranks um, you know and those that becomes fifty percent or uh, or the entire world uh, depending on the cascading effects of it um, so it's a very interesting focus I think to have to inspire five percent yes yes absolutely. You know, I, I want to ask with your music because it is so pure. Um, I, I pick up in your voice. It's it, to me, it's like a softer version, and I don't mean a less powerful. I just mean softer <laughs> version yes. of opera, because actually, in the softness, there's. It's almost like even more powerful than what you hear in opera singers because it is gentle in its way. And right. 
is that something that you just happen to come on naturally, or is that something that you strive to get? For me, it is something that came naturally to me. I, for the, When I started as singing, I didn't have any teachers, so I was completely self-taught. Basically, with the raw material, I had to work with and had to get used to and, and just experiment with how I can use it to its full potential. So I did take some lessons in, in 2013 just to um, explore a little bit my range of, of what I'm capable of doing. Um, but later on, I realized that, you know, it's okay to have my own sound to to the type of music that I'm doing. And so right now, I'm really in the process of developing my voice and polishing my voice in the sense that people still softness, as you call it, um, but also um, go into the deeper ranges of the lower uh, registers of my voice. Well, and... and- and it's beautiful. I mean, you hit these high notes, uh, just what appears to the rest of the world anyways, effortlessly, and there's strength under it. There's strength and there's power. I mean, even in listening to different performance singers, uh, I see oftentimes where they struggle as they go to those high notes. So to just be experimenting with that flow and developing that flow um I think is a is a really powerful piece and a, and an example for all of us to realize that that's what following our path is like. It's about seeing how it flows for you, and then developing that, and then working with that, and seeing how you can expand and keep expanding the limits and keep expanding. Uh, beyond. So I think it's going to be interesting. Actually, you mentioned bringing in some of the the deeper tones. That's going to be interesting to hear as well with your voice because just the way it comes out (laughs) for you. (laughs) You know, it's it's what we think of and we go, and and I've had people describe things and they go, that's what heaven sounds like. (laughs) and I was like, yeah. yes, that is what heaven sounds like, exactly. <laughs> In there. Yeah. And so oh. I'm going to be fascinated to to hear that because you, you know, now some people, they focus, for example, on, um, they focus on certain genres, so to say. And, and the mm-hmm. opening song that we played of yours um, really, it has this epic movie thing, and then you come to solitude, and you've got this very peaceful, softer, slower, solemn piece going on, um, which is, I don't know where you even put that in a genre. I don't even know where you put your music in the genre. Oh, the join the club. You, I, don't, I don't know it myself. <laughs> Well, and this is great because you're paving the way for a whole new realm here. You know, basically, yes, it is celestial music, uh, but in a different realm of celestial music. But I've noticed also, and and we're going to get to this song in a little bit here, in a few minutes as I pull my connection back around. (laughs) Um, But we're going to get to this. And... uh, you have one that we're going to be playing here called Tat Vam Asi. Uh, and it's got, it's got kind of like a harp sound in the background. It's almost maybe got a little bit of Celtic overtones to it. Um, yeah. When I listen to this song, what I get is I get an immense sense of gratitude or appreciation for what is right there in that moment. You know, it's, it, it, I would describe it almost like a child that's immersed in the moment, full of awe and what's happening right then and there. So now I gotta hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is actually one of the four most important mantras in the the Sanskrit uh, language, and it says that these mantras were even 
Ages in the times of Lemurian and Atlantis. So, so they're ancient. They have such an incredible uh, moment that mantra is being chanted. You are reaffirming that God is here and within and all around you. And the literal translation of Tat, Tatvam Asi is that what it is. So you are constantly reaffirming of everything that is around you. So I really like the, uh, the metaphor that you're using as the child that is so in awe with everything that is existing around him. This is exactly what the mouth is about. Yeah, and, and this is another gift that you very specifically have is to get this feeling out. What the song is meant to be is exactly what the listener gets. And um, I love that you brought up that this is coming from a Sanskrit aspect, and that, the, that the terminology is Sanskrit, and that it's got its connection to Lemuria, which I actually was just in conversation with some people uh, yesterday, I think it was, um, about some things that, that I'm looking at doing some collaboration because I do a lot of different things in numerology and and old uh, connecting of, of letters and numbers and different things like that. And it, there are these codes and we were talking about it I said I remember you two you were on the you know this this place when this happened in Lemuria <laughs> and they go yes I was uh, and and to realize that the translation of this is God is here within and all around and that does bring in that present moment and it does remind us that to be in that present moment innocent like a child that we are going to get to experience God. We are going to get to experience the divine all around us. And and when you listen to this music, man, I would love to be in a room surrounded with speakers <laughs> or at least where I get that, that sound going all around me and hear this. And I encourage everybody as we play this song that you close your eyes and you just, Listen to the music. Don't do anything else, okay? Don't have conversation. It's a, it's only a few minutes, so it's not going <laughs> to, it's only five minutes, so you're not going to take a whole world of time out of your day. And just completely tune in to what the vocals are here. So this is uh, Tat Ram Asi, and listen in and enjoy being in the moment with the divine.
should probably give everybody a chance to come out of that <laughs> for a little bit. But uh, really, really beautiful. It 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 does. There's just this. Um, I I know I have a lot of Celtic and Druidic roots uh, with family history in Ireland and England and Wales and Scotland and. I know I've got connections to Norway and the Druidic areas and um, that that whole runic culture, Viking culture and things too. And this just, I don't know, it just transformed me. And boy, if I had to pick a song that was perfect for May Day, this is it. You know, it really um, brings it in. And, and one of the things that is such a great reminder with this song, Angelia, is that it's the prayers don't have to be complicated. They they're really just as simple as that. And when we you know, this is like an affirmation and a prayer. If you mentioned it from from Sanskrit, God is here within and all around. And you know, whether you use the term God or divine or whatever you choose to use it's really making us affirm and make that connection. And when we choose to do that, we're going to experience the divine. There's no way to avoid experiencing the divine when we allow ourselves to to truly be there and be in that. And um, this is such a beautiful, that song I think is just such a beautiful way to bring that forward as opposed to some of the traditional, say, religious um, melodies that are out there. <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing that. It's, it's something that is very deep to my heart that I have such a big love for God and a lot of people ask me, uh, what is your religion? Like, what do you honor? And I always say, I, I'm i not a Christian, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm, I'm not a Hindu. I am just a person that is seeing the divine connection with God in in everything and in everyone. And I see truth in every religion. There is beauty in every religion. But I I don't consider myself a religious person. Um, but I express my hate and in that way I hope to spiral. And and I think that that is a powerful thing. Um, like you, I, I feel that it comes through every belief system. And like you, I'm I'm just that voice in the universe. I'm a different voice than you are. <laughs> I would love to have your voice, but um, but I will graciously and lovingly enjoy my own gifts and not be envious. <laughs> <laughs> and just simply enjoy the one you're bringing into the world as well as my own. And I think that that's such a powerful place to be to realize that we can use this term and that this is the connection and that this is the so-called religion that's not tied to necessarily a particular group as much as it is the religion of connection or the, um, the practice of connecting in there. And that is such a gift. Now, I want to check with you a little bit because you bring in all these amazing different sounds into your work as, as we've been experiencing that kind of epic soundtrack thing to the the softer things to the last piece which had harp tonations to it. What are you using to create these different sounds and, and are you doctoring up this music at all? Because, you know, this is a question people are going to ask, and I don't mean this in a doubting way because I've seen you (laughs) in your videos. (laughs) I know how it works for you. So I've had that firsthand experience to know differently. But um, there's a lot of people today, and there's a lot of musicians that, that do doctor things up, as we might say. And what is that word that you're using? Doct? Doctor it up. Uh, in other words, it means, um, you know, to, to or adjust, kind of like we would touch up a photo. photo. 
Ah, okay. Well, the what I am using is uh, I use a lot of uh, virtual instruments on my computer. So I have my uh, my electric piano here, and th this is why I love technology so much because you can just create these etheric sounds. Um, the only thing what I do with my voice in order to alter it is to put a reverb on it. And what I what what that is is basically you put an echo to your voice. And the reason why I do that is ever since I was a child, I loved singing in the bathroom. Like literally, I always loved the 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 reverb that you would get from these empty walls, uh, whether it is in a church or in an empty bathroom, you know, at camp. And I would always every morning just go to the bathroom and start singing because I love the sound so much of it. And later on, when I got handy with the computer, I, I figure out how you could put an echo, a reverb on your voice and on the word of the So that is the only thing that I'm, um, uh, how do you say, that's all, all me that you're hearing here. And and that's kind of interesting to to do that and take that aspect of actually knowing as a child <laughs> the sound <laughs> dynamics of the bathroom, which is why we all sound so good in the bathroom. By the way, just for those of you that are wondering, um, it's the reverb. <laughs> it's <just in> there. <laughs> and, and so uh, you know, and then to translate that and to to find that in the computer. So uh, other than the reverb, there is no adjusting what you're doing. You're simply using virtual uh, sounds and instruments and um, and the keyboard that you have that you work with as well um, in that. But I'll tell you, I've known a lot of people that have used these different pieces, and they don't sound anywhere near as good as you sound. <laughs> In my opinion, oh wow, it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as you sound with this. Oh wow, so that, that is a big you know, compliment. <laughs> Thank you. I, I look at that and I say, there's only one piece that separates you from the rest of them, and that's divine channel. And and, and this shows us that when we bring a message clearly into the world, like you're doing, and you're honoring, and you're coming from this heart centered place as you're doing in your work and your music, that um, we are going to excel. We are going to be separated aside. We are going to be the leader. As a matter of fact, I ran into the same thing recently because I've been applying to be a continuing education provider for my work, which means massage therapists and body workers. In order to keep their certifications current, they have to get different courses, and that means that they'll be able to come and take my workshops and my courses, and they'll get continuing education credit for that. Um, on that formal level. And when I when I applied, they came to me and they said, well, we need to find out who you're certified with, you know, like whose work are you copying? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm not really copying anybody's work. I'm doing my own thing. Like, you know, I, how do I prove that I know what I know? <laughs> I don't have yes. a choice to prove it like you do. You know, how do I prove I know what I know and that this is yes. just my original work? And and to me, that's I, I just love that. I just love that it's original, you know, in its own place. You're the leader. You're the leader in there. That's all I can say. You're you're the leader yes, in there. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's the whole reason why I, I had this show. Like, um, I had a show that I started in, in, two, in 2014 in, in September. Uh, and it's called the Shine Your Light Show. And during that show, it is my way of giving back to the world. So, I mean, it's it's great to, to express myself through the music that I am creating and that it's helping a lot of people. But I actually want to encourage people to do something of their own and to really shine their own light. So it's... It, it, everybody has their own specific talent and everybody has their own mission in this life. So when you discover what that mission is, 
we can actually make a beautiful difference in the world. So my motto is always be the light you wish to see in the world. And that is really what, what the Shire Light Show is about. I think we just synchronized because you're coming in completely clear. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and and also, I was just going to ask you that question. Why do you think it's important for people to be the light they wish to see? And what does that mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, we did synchronize. <laughs> so obviously the last song got God within us here. <laughs> yeah. In this interview, I think that's a powerful message, and it's one that I bring out as well in my books. And people are always wondering, what's my message? What's my message? What's my connection? And it's like, look mm-hmm. around. What is it that you want to see in the world? There's where yes. your message is. I mean, you just expressed that. It's it, There's so many ways to get there. But look around, and what is it that you're craving? And then become that. And that's yes. the key. When you become it, it's just automatically going to be there. Yes, exactly. And when you found that that gift you know, in how you want to manifest that light in the world, you're going to get really, really good at it. When I look back at my life, you know, when I started out singing, I was mainly the reason why I was so uh, lacking the confidence in my voice was because I I knew I wasn't a good singer. Like I wasn't professionally trained. I didn't have any of the the technical skills a, a, a t- well trained singer would have. So I was aware of that. But like you said earlier, I think really what helped me to get through and to really grow in my craft was the connection I had with God. And every time I sing, I always focus on the heart of the one. It's, this is literally what it means. It's the heart of God. So when I sing, I'm inside the heart of God and I hear the beating sound of his heart. And I imagine everyone who is listening to this music, or, or to the, my voice, that I take them with them in this in this cosmical journey in the universe. So they become one in the heart of the one. That's really beautiful. I mean, just beautifully expressed, beautifully shared in that. And if we all went forward with that thought, if we woke up each and every day and said, you know, I'm in the heart of the one, and that is what I'm going to share with the world, and that is what I'm going to bring out, and I'm going to be that, and that's going to be in everything I do. You didn't need the technical... (laughs) Oh, no. you're already there. You didn't need it. and But you bring up a good point because so many times when we are bringing something into the world and we're becoming what we want to see and we're, we're seeing that as a missing piece sometimes, I think, because we're meant to bring that out, which is why we're noticing it. And... Even when we're really, really good at what we do, we can still have these doubts come up. We can still have these challenges come up into our life, which brings me to another point. How has this light and keeping this focus of being in the heart of one help you to be tougher than your challenges? For me, it would be if you, well, we ha- all have these doubts, right? So we feel, okay, I'm not good enough at this, or I lack the the education in this, I don't have the diplomas, I don't have the certifications. These are all outer things that are stopping you. And what is this outer thing? This is the outer mind that is really telling you on a human level, on a human level, you're not Uh, certified or you're not good enough to do what you're doing but God in you is qualified and that is the only thing you should be thinking about so let go of the doubts let go of the the worries that you're not good enough but really start focusing on the light that is within you because God is so incredibly powerful like there is nothing in the world that cannot be done and I, I just have to laugh at the 
and we had such a, a terrible difficulties with the internet connection and I was so worried like how are we going to do this and then I and, and I know you did the same thing we started praying so hard to to just allow it to flow on its own and when we let go of all the the, the human thinking and the human mind that is worrying and constantly trying to protect us from, from doing foolish things. We just have to take over uh, that mind through our divine presence. Absolutely. And here again, you bring up a couple of really great key points. Um, we were, we were both in in that space of just like, okay, let's just step back and we're going <laughs> to, we're going to refocus our energies. And and I know that I can always ride with whatever the circumstances are um, that are happening in, in this. And, and it's interesting because I, too, have been having connection problems until we started to get through it. And one of the things that we brought up uh, in our conversations prior to the show was that, wow, there must be a really powerful message that needs to get out here today. And this is going to really influence some people and really bring some incredible things forward because, uh, and this happens, sometimes when we're right on the edge of bringing some really incredible things forward, we're going to hit challenges. It doesn't mean the road is just free and easy the second you step on your path. I mean, sometimes that happens, but it's going to, it's going to come forward and say, do you really trust me? Are you really going to be in this space? And it is very true what you faced, what I faced along the way with bringing my work out. It's like, man, I've got this great work. Why isn't everything filled up to a T for months out? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, why, aren't the, why aren't the shows sold out ahead of time, you know, for a year yeah, in advance? Yeah. Um, and, and we can do this. And this is actually one of the things that this year I brought into my tour, which is actually about addressing these outer programs that we have. And we have to remember that those outer programmings that make us doubt ourselves once we're on the path is not God speaking to us. It's not the divine speaking to us. Um, it is the physical world programming that says, I'm going to judge you and these are the standards you have to meet. You know what? You don't. Because the divine never operates in these heavy physical world standards. It's all about stillness and connection and present moment and just letting it flow, not judging yourself, not putting yourself up against somebody else's regulations and standards and uh, requirements. It's about just letting it open up. And uh, and I, I'm working on helping people break this programming. <laughs> yes. Which is why I oftentimes sit back and go, great, we're going to let it flow. It's going to happen. It's going to come through. Yes. And not to worry. Exactly. Um, and, and it's just and, a matter uh, of letting go as well. Because we we sometimes we're so caught up in our vision of how things should be and how things should go. But oftentimes, 99.9% of all times, it is a a completely different uh, flow of direction according to the divine will. So I've noticed in in my own experience, I, I always liked being in control of the situation because in that way I would know everything would be going the right way. But at some point, I think it was just really my lesson to to learn to surrender. So everything went wrong every time, all the time. And then I, it was really this moment, this blissful moment when I realized I'm not the one who should be in control. And I'm, I'm not that perfect being that can actually create the perfection and manifest the perfection in my world today. So it is really God in me, the divine presence in me, my divine potential that will be able to do this effortlessly. And that's really an important thing that I would like to add that it's really about letting go and surrendering willingly, gladly and willingly to the divine will. And I should just say, you are so wise beyond your years. 
<laughs> your physical years. You're, you're obviously a very old soul, which is where this wisdom comes from, because you are very young to have grasped these concepts and to realize that even in the midst of those challenges, there's perfection in that. And yeah. I am doing. I have been doing so much surrendering. People who have been following my journey know <laughs> the levels of surrendering. Matter of fact, a, a contact that I recently uh, connected with while I was in the Denver area um, just a little while back, and they said to me, they go, you're not on a shamanic journey. You're on an ascended master journey right now. <laughs> 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 and uh, listening to everything. And, you know, it is when we get through and say, you know what, I'm not in control here. And that's scary sometimes, I think, for people to acknowledge, to say, I'm not in control of this. My divine self is in control of this. God's in control of this. Um, and, and God isn't the one that's punishing me. They're just making me see how perfect that divine flow is. And the more I'm willing to acknowledge that and the more I'm willing to let go of that control, the easier the ride's going to get. That's when the flow is going to come. And and it can put us in those scary places in the meantime, what's so scary. And it's, it's, it's going to say, okay, do you trust me now? How about if yes. we get a little bit scarier? Do you trust me now? <laughs> yes. And our knee-jerk reaction is to say, I don't trust you because look at where I am. But in reality, (laughs) it takes those circumstances for us to let go and go, okay, I'm letting you into my life now. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And sometimes it really is the, you know, the scarier things get or the more problematic they get. So we get so frustrated about it. That's when we really dare to let go because we don't know how to handle this. We get so overwhelmed by it. And that's really when when spirit can kick in and take over. And then we we get this feeling uh we, we we get this message of like finally you let go. Like finally I can give you something that that you really deserve. Now somehow I think this conversation's gonna p- play into this other piece that we're gonna get in <laughs> here called I am Atman Brahma. And when I listened to this, I had a very specific feeling that came through. And what we've been talking about, this release, is something that ties into what I observed. And that is I picked up this energy of winter time, family gathering at the holidays, um, attending a church service at Christmas time, for example, very reflective yet very full of joy. And it's when we're willing to let go. It says, uh, the other notes I had here was consciousness setting in, awareness, presence. And when I think of that in relation to this conversation we've been having about letting go, that's when the consciousness sets in. That's when the awareness kicks in. That's when we experience the present. Uh, there's a reflection that with holidays that go with holiday time the, and that winter season and the Christmas time, that no matter how challenging life is, that's when we let go. So maybe yeah. that's what I picked up in this piece. Or maybe you can share just a little something on that and we'll get that played. Yes. So I am Atma Brahma. It's one of the uh, four same mantras as well. And personally, this is one of my favorite songs on my latest um, album that I released, Asatoma. And it was, I, I remember sitting behind my computer and I, the whole goal about this CD was to create mantras, but not in the traditional way. So I wanted to give it an angelic twist to it, a western twist to it. So I was sitting behind my computer and it was, so um, I had difficulties thinking of a melody that would go perfect with this song. And then at some point, uh, after several days of working on this, I threw everything away and this came through. And I realized like this literally lifts, lifts you up to that place where you acknowledge that you are God and God is you. And that really 
you know, th those are the four mantras that really affirm this every, with every mantra that is being chanted, you are God and God is you and God is in everything that you are and what you do. And this is powerful because many people really struggle with this factor of I am God. And so to have that kind of a mantra that allows us to connect with that space, acknowledge that space, and receive that space, I think is really powerful. And I'm, I'm just waiting for everything on my end to reconnect here for a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. Because this is going, uh, I've had to reconnect several times here, but I think we're good to go. I'm going to get this played here, and this is I Am Apsan Rama, and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
so, so very beautiful. Um, we have been listening to the music and the person behind the music, Angelia Grace, here on Activating Compassion Radio. And, you know, Angelia, Angelia, you bring a whole new realm to mantras. We've been talking about that. You are carving this this whole new niche in music, so to say. And um, it, it crosses so many genres. And most of the time when we hear mantras, they're very deep. You know, the vocals are very deep and it's very monotonous sounding. And yours is nothing like that. <laughs> That's exactly why I want to try a mantra CD. <laughs> yes. And, you know, to me, it's just so much easier. When I listen to your voice, I can just release into that. I can just, um, I, I, I can relate to the deep tones too, don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. you bring this flow to them, this different flow, this different pace to them, Again, that gentleness, that gentle strength, um, and ironically, that's something that is connecting through the importance of these times is to use this gentle strength, um, the strength of God, the strength of within that's coming out in gentle ways, not in wars and battles and heavy duty, you know, artillery, so to say, <laughs> that yeah. we get from some of these other genres. Um, and it's very powerful. We're winding down in our show. And I want to give you a moment to do a couple of things to share with us a little bit about what is going to be our closing song, the Gayatri Mantra. And also, just to get in any closing insights that you would like to share with people. And I, yeah. <laughs> okay. So the Gayatri Mantra is actually the first mantra I ever learned as a child. And when I was about eight or nine years old, my mom, she shared with me a booklet with Sanskrit mantras. And this was the first mantra that was in that book. And so I was going through it. And my mom, she recited to me once so I could hear the pronunciation. And then after hearing it once, I could already uh, say the mantra fluidly without looking at the booklet, as if I remembered something really deep down in my soul. And the Gayatri Mantra is the very first mantra of my my latest CD that I just released uh, about a month ago, which is my very first mantra CD ever called Asatoma. And Asatoma means going from darkness into the light. And Asatoma is another mantra that you will hear on the CD as well. Um, But it is really about going from a dark period in your life into the brighter future. And it's about letting go of the past and embracing the future. It's about releasing the dark energies from whatever that is holding you back from moving forward into the light and when i say moving into the light it really is about shining your light and manifesting and anchoring the light into this physical realm so the the gayatri mantra is really about um, embracing that divinity and creating world peace and a space for others to shine their light as well so i think it is a, an incredible uh an incredible song that has touched my heart and has opened my heart in so many ways and I hope it will do the same for uh, all the listeners on the show I'm so glad I saved that for last (laughs) without (laughs) even knowing everything because it is the perfect transition uh, for this time of year for moving from what has been infertile in our lives to moving into fertility to going from the darkness to the light, as you describe, And this is something that so many people can relate to right now uh, of these transitions. And, and even I myself have told people, people are like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that you're so at peace with what's happening in your life. And I 
constantly am telling them, there's nothing that's going to leave my life that is part of the light. There's nothing that is going to leave my life that I need. So why would I try to hold on to it? Why would I go back to it? And we're in a, a astrological alignment right now where there's a great temptation for us to step back into that darkness, so to say, because it's more comfortable in some ways. It's the comfortable known versus the uncomfortable unknown. And yet we can't we can't make that progression, we can't make that transition until we're willing to let go of what's heavy. And it's like detoxing our system in a way. Until we're willing to go through maybe some of the periods where our body gets a little shaky when we're detoxing things from it. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what happens on a spiritual level as well. We sometimes get a little shaky when we're detoxing these things out of our life. But once we get past that, it's beautiful and it's energetic and life opens in this beautiful way. So thank you for sharing that. And I hope, I hope, and I'm going to put it, I have really no wish list. I'll tell you that right now. I don't have a bucket list because I feel like if I left today, my life would be complete. Um, I live with no regrets about anything, no matter what it is. And yet, I'll tell you, I would love at some point to be able to listen to you live. Oh, wow. (laughs) I I would love to. Oh, I, well, it, 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 it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, at the moment I'm planning my tour for next year and I ha- always had, the, I was always, because I was so um, thinking like, what is my genre? How should I present myself? Because I don't really see myself doing a regular concert. I don't see myself as an entertainer. Um, but more as a transformational artist, because I, I aspire to really create that movement and that, that uh, sense of healing and upliftment when people listen to to my music. And so in my recent uh, experiences, it became very clear to me that I should be giving healing concerts. So these healing concerts would be filled with all this kind of music. And what was really interesting was that in my visions, I would see the people, um, they would be lying down on their yoga mats or even just sitting in their chairs and experience that full healing during the concert. So it was a very deep experience. And that is definitely something that I would want to be doing in the very near future. Wow. I, I just love that. I just love that. Um, well, if you ever make it to the U.S., <laughs> please <laughs> let me know, because I, I will adjust my tour to wherever you're going to be. Um, <laughs> or or maybe there's possibilities, you know, for us to collaborate there somewhere if you can make it out here. Or oh, who knows? Who knows if I make it your way one of these days? It's it's. Uh, yeah, yes, about the absolutely. only goal I have is to visit Iceland. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, yes. Definitely come to Ireland. You're more welcome here. And it's it's one of the things that, you know, Ireland has brought so many blessings into my life. I moved to Ireland last year, and this is really where I found my my musical foundation. And a lot of people kept telling me, oh, you're your voice sounds like Enya and you have this Celtic feel to your to your music, so you have to go there. So I I went there and I planned on um just staying here for a couple of weeks and I ended up staying living here and working here. So uh, but I'm definitely planning on coming to the US the US and um I'm hoping to do that next year. So Well definitely keep me posted on that because I would love to see if I can connect with you in some way in that yeah. process. And and I think by that point, I will have more things in place myself. Um, I'm positive of it. Uh, that uh, I think you could definitely fit very well into some of the things that I'm working on developing. So we'll both put that intention out 
into the world. I have to say it's going to be a pleasure. I know that I'm going to run over a little bit on the time here. So uh, with this closing song, for those that want to hear it, you're going to have to go and listen to it in the archives. I'm so sorry, but you'll just have to catch it in the archives because it will keep recording for us and we will get that song in, but you won't be able to hear it live on the show because the live show cuts off at the end of two hours and five minutes. It's going to cut off. But if you go back to the archives, you'll be able to catch it and it will have the full set of everything, even what extends past our, our show time here. So yes, and, and, and if you and if people want to listen to the full album, they can do so, and they can find it on my website, AngeliaMusic.com. Exactly, and and you'll be able to follow her work there. Wow, what a gift to have you on the show, and I am truly, truly blessed to be able to be sharing your music here on May Day um, with the world, because our listeners branch worldwide and I believe with your music you're going to bring world peace you're going to bring that factor into to our world there's just no doubt to me and I am so glad to so much gratitude to have you here today. Mm, thank you so much for having me Jesse it was an honor being here wonderful and I do want to mention that Next week on our show, I'm going to have Tawanda M. Allen with us, and she's going to be taking a look um, and sharing, uh, I should say we're going to be taking a look, she's going to be sharing her work in relation to mothers and daughters. And this is going to be a really powerful show, whether you have a good relationship or don't have a good relationship with your mother or with your daughter, you're going to want to tune into this because she, she gets into some incredible things in her work. And, again, I am on tour right now with the Compassion Tour. I'm traveling all over the U.S. I just finished some time in the Denver area, and I'm traveling through the Midwest dancing with tornadoes. Um, Fortunately, the weather has stayed very moderate, and I haven't had to dance with tornadoes yet. But I'm getting ready to head uh, into Inner Wisdom, which is in Galesburg, Illinois, Beautiful store, beautiful location there, wonderful people. Please come and visit me. At least say hi, if nothing else. Um, You might still be able to get an appointment. I I have to say, Liana, I think, has me pretty much all booked up, but there's probably still room in the workshops, maybe a few private sessions available still. I will be there Monday through Thursday, so the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. And I'm taking appointments from 10 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. in the evening, doing workshops from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the evening. So definitely check that out. I'm going also up into, uh, well, I've got various full day events going on. In the meantime of that, I'm going to be working my way up to Traverse City, Michigan. And I'm going to be spending the summer solstice in Norway, Michigan, which is a beautiful pine tree forested area not far from the Wisconsin border, way off in a whole other part of Michigan that you wouldn't even think was Michigan. And uh, going to enjoy the time out there doing a full, full weekend event there. And then I'm going to be working my way back down towards the Detroit area and a little place outside of that called the Violet Flame uh, Enlightenment Center that I'll be doing a few days at. And that's going to be really, really wonderful there. That's saying Clinton Township. So you can check out and follow out where I'm going to be all over uh, the U.S. I have several things that are still getting put into place. I'm going to be back on the East Coast, by the way, um, in the fall area. I'm already booked back into Aquarius Sanctuary for October, and there will be other, and there will be other events in that Pennsylvania area. I'll be back um, in, in various other places there, the Enlightened Path and things like that. Um, Holistic Center in um, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be there. I'll be all over the East Coast, Cape Cod, the whole work. So you just got to check it out, Jesse and Nichols George, the number one dot com. And uh, again, May's special deal. If you sign up and participate in any full day or full weekend event during the month of May or June, you're going to receive a free set of my Activating Compassion books. And you can learn all about that. And the new video just went up today for the month, for the full moon. You can find it all on my website, jessianicholgeorge1.com. 
Don't forget we've got several shows here on Main Street Universe throughout the week. Monday nights with Randy Goldberg. Tuesdays with Susan Weed sharing her work in herbs and natural plants. Wednesdays is our flagship show with Daniel and Janice. And Daniel, I should mention, is also on tour right now with his band Dragon's Head, which we're planning on having come up on the summer solstice. Their music's going to be perfect for that time. And uh, oftentimes, Darren Bucher follows up on that show. Uh, he's a reader with Madame Lebeau in New Orleans. And Kevin Baird is doing some stuff periodically with New Companion. We're going to be bringing him on this summer as well on my show where he can share that with you. And they're all on tour right now. A lot of people are anyway. So there's kind of a little break in the shows, but don't give up on us because they're all coming back and they're all going to get back in motion again. Um, in the meantime, this is Jesse Ann Nichols. George, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. And again, thanks to all of our listeners, not only on Blog Talk, but those streaming live through 10, known as Prayer Encounters Network, Stream Finder, Talk Stream Live, and those catching our podcast at iTunes and TuneIn.com, and also those catching the YouTube version of the show. I definitely look forward to seeing you back here next week as we delve more into activating compassion. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed my show this the, today, then share it with other people. And I know you're going to want to share it because this music's beautiful. And Angelia is absolutely beautiful. Inside, outside, you name it, she's beautiful. And it's going to be available at this same link in our archives. I'm leaving you today with her song, Dioxary Mantra. And again, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again next week right here on Activating Compassion Radio. May you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a truly amazing week. And I'm going to get that queued up for you in just a second here. Those that have been listening know there's been a little bit of a um, <laughs> delay with the Internet here. And here we go. Dioxin Mantra. Have a great week, everybody. And very happy Beltane and May Day. Thank you.